Hey guys, welcome back to Nations and Nobles, and, uh, well, y yeah, I'm just gonna get straight into it. We have a project to work on, and, um, that project being a little gap I've seen in the market. Now, uh, in the last episode, I may or may not have mentioned that I wanted to get a little included in selling things because I think that uh, has some potential. Uh, ice is definitely one of the things that I do want to sell. But another thing is, uh, well, a prismarine farm. And we have a lot of the materials here to make it. Um, and I'll have the tutorial of which I'm using in the description below. But uh, yeah, there are two major things that I am missing here. One is string for uh, scaffolding. And we, we already managed to trade uh, for a bunch of bamboo uh, from Obi. Uh, we gave him a bunch of ice for his little storage systems. And uh, yeah, he gave us a bunch of bamboo in return. But yeah, the other thing we need really badly is iron. Uh, more specifically for hoppers and minecarts. The minecarts are like these two slots here and the hoppers are this slot here. Um, and we just got a, uh, a request from Yevo to basically bring a bunch of food and we can get whatever we like. And um, yeah, we're gonna ask for four stacks of iron. Uh, that'll do us plenty. I already did the math on that, and it looks like he is ready, or getting close to ready. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and meet him over there. By the way, I just did a stream earlier this week, and one of the things that we did was uh, make an entirely new cliff for a future build, and I think I did a pretty solid job with that. But the other main thing that I did was place down all of these buttons. So now piglins and hoglins and all of the sort should no longer spawn on this road. So now it runs smooth as butter. It's almost kind of eerie, like how nothing spawns out here. Oh, that beeper's still going off. Yevo! Yo, Yevo! Hello? Hey, so um, I heard you uh, crying out for help when it came to food a little while ago. Hello? Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. But, How's um, it going? Uh, Welcome going, back. Going pretty well. Yeah, I didn't expect to be doing business this soon, but I, mm -hmm. I have something you want, and you have something I want, so makes That's right. make sense so um i heard yeah. earlier this week that you had a little bit of food trouble yeah uh not a little a lot actually but yes yes yeah i i, I can only imagine with living out in the middle of a <laughs> icelandic uh mountain range yeah what, there's what, not what much if, out here what have you been using for food <laughs> like up until this point anyways some stuff I had just acquired, you know, from my previous residence. I had a bunch of bread, oh, wow. some so carrots, you... and some steak. A, a, a little bit of everything. So you you were really rationing it then? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. There's not much out here, so I needed to uh, take it slow. Yeah, but in any case, uh, here's a little... Whoa. Okay, awesome. This is amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can only imagine how long this took for you to gather. Uh a couple a couple of hours. Um the 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 cow crusher at spawn is not very efficient. <laughs> but um mm, yeah, I <laughs> I bet, I bet. So you want iron, right? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Would you happen to have four stacks of it on hand? I, I'm in a little bit of a project right now, and it requires a lot of hoppers, so... Oh, oh, apparently yes. apparently you got the stuffs. I have some stuffs, that's right. 
Yeah, four stacks, no problem. Anything for you, then. You've helped me in the past, and you help me right now again, so... Here. Oh! Oh my gosh. Four stacks of the finest. Finest iron in this world. Nice. Thank you. Yep. Just, yeah, just know Yevo's always looking out for everyone. Pleasure doing business with you. And, uh, likewise, I, I got, I got to run. I got a lot of projects to complete the, the, these next two weeks. <laughs> yeah, see, I can imagine. That. Yeah, see ya. see ya. Bye. Take care. With uh, that out of the way, we just need to do one more thing. And, um, Silver logged on for a second there, so maybe he'll log back on in a second. Hopefully, maybe. And I, I can trade for some string because we're, we're going to need a lot of uh, scaffolding and we j just like casually going about we have gathered three stacks so all we need is approximately four and we should be good to go but I have no idea on what to trade with him okay he should I, I last I saw that he was in here for whatever reason Oh, oh, hello. Hey, Van. Uh, how, how you doing? Is the <laughs> is the is the copper is is the mountain of copper faring well? <laughs> the it's still there. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, I mean, you you haven't been a uh, in around town too much as of recently. So uh, what's what's the deal? Oh, I've been grinding a lot trying to get resources for my base and just uh, start a new life but mainly I need food because I there is nothing out there in the wild right oh <laughs> yeah I, I can imagine but um I mean conveniently enough I have stacked up on a decent bit of food I just completed an order for Yevo and I had a little bit of extra yeah, that, that steak is looking pretty good. <laughs> Just saying. But, what um... What do you like in return? For some of that? Do you... I know you're not very well established yet, but do you have four stacks of string? You are just in luck. Let me just grab some out. Here, here you go. Four All right. stacks uh, of string. Like a stack of steak? Does that sound good to you? That sounds perfect. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. You have no idea how much time you just saved me. <laughs> you have saved me from dying, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I guess on, on two extremes of the of the earth, you guys are strug like both you and Yevo is struggling a little bit. Yeah, there is nothing out there. I've only been surviving off of. Uh, Dead bushes. Ooh, yikes. Okay. Yeah. Well, having to nibble at the stick. <laughs> I ho hopefully, you have a, a farm or something set up by the time you're through with that stack. Thank you, thank you. Because, I mean, I, I, as easy a, a, of business as this was, I mean, you know, we're still friends. I, I think you should eat <laughs> something other than bark. <laughs> thank you for the steak, and I hope you enjoy yeah. your steak. Yeah, no, that I that's perfect. I'm in the middle of making a farm, and I need a lot of scaffolding, so that's perfect. Oh, perfect. All right. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. I'll see you later. See you around, buddy, old pal. All right. See ya. <laughs> All right, that works out perfectly. Okay. So we have actually more iron than what we originally planned. And we have just, we're, we're just shy of four stack or of seven stacks of string, so uh, we just gather a few little more pieces, and we should be good to go. We just need to craft these things up, and that should do it. Now we just need to put all these materials away, and now we've got to look for a uh, what was it called? Ocean monument. Yeah. Um, 
thing is, I often run into them accidentally, but whenever I'm actively looking for them, I always have this issue of not running into what I want to, so... Yeah, this might take a minute. Okay, I am going to actually go east because it's not very explored and the less people that load it accidentally the better just so we don't accidentally have any server lag stuffs happening because you, you i mean i the way i'm making it should make it so that that doesn't happen but you never know someone coming in and out of chunks that could mess with things and things could malfunction so i still want to build it far out just in case and also yeah, we have a pretty big ocean around here, so yeah, we should be good. Okay, I'm sorry, Silver, I know you're on the server, and loading this many chunks this quickly is probably going to cause issues, but I promise this won't be a usual thing. Ruin here... Oh, it's already been explored. Never mind. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Wow, okay. I can already tell that this one's going <laughs> to... That, uh, this farm's gonna be pretty stinking efficient. Now, we have to call in some friends, and we're gonna raid this together. This will, uh, be a bit of fun. <laughs> so, while we wait for people to find a good time to get online, because scheduling stuff is hard, um, I actually have another project in mind. So... Do you guys remember from last episode when I said, hmm, maybe I should get into like selling stuff like ice? Well, we're getting to work on that. And uh, as you can see, we chose this little spot a little outside of the town because let's be honest, uh, the, the town's a little crowded at this point. Like there's little bits and bobs where I could do things but just not quite enough space or it would feel too crowded. Like right here, I feel like it would be feel a little too crowded. I kind of like having the flora here. Maybe I should add a little something here, but uh, have it be more outdoorsy. But uh, this spot over here is not only good in terms of, you know, being out of the way. It also kind of helps the aesthetic I'm going for because it's kind of on the river. And uh, it's going to be kind of a rustic looking building. But yeah, uh, as you can see, we have a bunch of shulker boxes here, uh, mostly with building materials. But there is some redstone bits that we're going to be including in this thing. Uh, in the design, I... Man, is it crammed. I, I already did it in a creative world, and yeah, it is crammed with redstone in the first basement floor. But yeah, in any case, uh, let's try to get started. So the first thing I like to do is figure out the frame whenever I'm copying a build. Like, uh, if you have a frame-like block, like uh, what I tend to use with uh, spruce logs and whatnot, uh, I tend to put those in first just so I know my scale, I know where everything is supposed to go after that. Uh, quite similar to how architecture works in real life, maybe that's why I uh, like tend to do that. The framework always goes up first. Um, but yeah, I believe this is spaced out by three. Alright, we've got a frame going, and as you can see it has a... Uh, Interesting framework. <laughs> it might be hard for you guys to see what's going to be going on here during this stage because there's vital parts of the shape that aren't really included right now because, well, it's not made out of the spruce logs. It's made out of other blocks. But, um, yeah, hopefully this gives you a basic idea of the scale at least. That being said, let's get rid of all these random buttons that I had here just basically to give myself a guide. Now for a bit of the wall, which is going to have kind of a gradient. It's going to be a very subtle gradient. It's not going to be too, too much, except for at the top, which is for a reason. But yeah, I'm actually trying out gradients a little bit, so... Um, Please don't criticize me too hard, because I'm not very experienced. 
Alright, as you can see, we've got significantly more going on now. We actually have walls and all the stuffs. We actually don't have a floor yet, and that is for a specific reason. I'm going to be trying to do the floors last. But yeah, as you can imagine, that made building some parts of this kind of aggravating. But uh, yeah, the reason I don't want to do the floors right now is because I have a lot of redstone planned for this building. Uh, just to make the, the shopping experience just a little bit fancier and also to have some convenient secrets for myself, um, such as a payment storage room and uh, a secret door and what have you. As you can see, we got the basement floor in. I'm probably gonna add a couple more blocks in, but I, I'm only gonna worry about that once we get the redstone started. We're also going to have a first floor entrance coming in this way because, I mean, the reason I made it up there was because I knew most people are gonna fly in. So it's probably more convenient to put the entrance on the, the upper deck. But I also want people that, let's say for some reason they don't have their wings on them or they ran out of rockets, Ori, I'm looking at you. Um, maybe they have to go through down here. So I, what I wanna do is make a little water elevator that pushes them back up to there, but is also covered so that like they don't accidentally trip on the water as they're moving about the store. So I'm actually, I think I'm gonna work on that first. So here's my basic idea here. It, it, it's a water elevator and there's some pressure plates here that automatically shut the doors behind you, some signs, and notice the scaffolding, right? So I've actually been looking at designs for guardian farms and yeah, the one I'm using uh, makes it so that guardians get pushed from water into and above the scaffolding. I'm like, does that work for players as well? It does. So, uh, as you can imagine, it makes a very neat entrance for anybody that doesn't happen to have wings or whatnot. So, um, yeah, if you, like, covered it up with snow and a little bit of carpets, boom, you have a completely hidden waterway uh, that allows you to get in without any hassle. But yeah, layered snow is one of my favorite blocks in the game purely because it's a thin block that you can go through from beneath and it's very helpful for like ladders and also just stuff like this. So yeah, really handy. Or wait, can they even go on ladders? Well, they can go on scaffolding, so it barely matters, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Now, before we continue on, we actually have to announce the winner of the jack-o'-lantern hunt we set up last episode. So, yeah, uh, let's head over to the town hall and meet everybody. So, <laughs> cinematic mode. <laughs> this, dun, uh, dun, dun. I am honestly quite surprised at the uh, comeback that this little game had. We, I, I do apologize for the tidbits of... <laughs> bad game design at be at the beginning but uh oh, no, don't do it again <laughs> shame on you but uh <laughs> so <sorry>. th <laughs> thanks to ori over here we were able to get it up and running again thank you also while we're here before we get into the celebrations congratulations ori on 2000 subscribers oh yeah <laughs> Oh, I'm glad there's not a bad guy above me. Oh. oh uh, 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 oh. Uh, they don't <laughs> I don't think it them. actually hurts them. No, uh, <laughs> they, if there's no bang, that doesn't hurt them. But uh, moving on, the, the moment you've all been waiting for, who won? Well, uh, I got to build up the... the, the it's stuff. not me. It's got, not me, guys. I gotta build up the suspense and go from lowest to highest. So, <laughs> one, two, three, four, or five. So, um, unfortunately, in fifth place, we we have Grizzly. You know, he tried. Uh, he he is a bear, after all. I'm sure they're bear. nearsighted or can't see colors or something. 
Uh, and also, you know, he's still new. He's still trying to focus on, you know, his stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm walking. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised that he managed to get any at all with like smushing the time all together. So, I, I appreciated him uh, giving it his best shot. In fourth place, we have Ori, and um, yeah. This is partially Ooh. because as soon as she agreed to help me, her her score was locked. But I mean, for the limited amount of time uh, that that she had, she honestly managed managed to get a decent amount. In third place, with forty nine pumpkins, we have Obi. A, a, a lot of them were in one night, correct? Yeah, they were. All most of them were in one night. Nice. Yeah, really impressive. <laughs> in second place, uh, we have 61 pumpkins from Beardo Max. Unfortunately, there was some lost, and we ultimately decided to rule that pumpkins that aren't submitted cannot be counted. So apologies for that, but that's just what we gotta do. That's okay, good job, Beardo! To confirm. Yeah, but no, that, that was... That was a fantastic performance. And nice. finally... All in one night, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in first place with... Let me do the math here. 72 pumpkins, right? Yes. Oh, I wow. had you beat. I had you beat. <laughs> um, is... <laughs> hold on. Sylvester Stone... Uh, Sylvester Stallone! Sylvester Stallone! Silver! Silver! Silver. For Silver. he's a jolly, jolly good, good fellow! For, for he's a jolly good, good creeper! No, 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 very good camel! 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 Which that nobody can Beardo deny. sometimes denies! Yeah, which sometimes Beardo denies. <laughs> if the first place winner could uh, come up to the uh, front, Beardo, if you could just back up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> you'll, you'll get your turn. My turn, I promise. <laughs> I'll, I'll get my termite. <laughs> the first place winner gets a whole block of netherite. <gasps> Thank you so much. Yeah, you uh, know how much this means to good me. Good job, Silver. Way to find those. Hey, okay. it's Grizz. Grizz. Hey, hey, Grizz. <laughs> Due to the complications we had at the beginning, and as a slight apology from yours truly, can the second place winner come up to the stands as well? Yes. Yay, Beardo! In, in in the spirit of fair competition, second place also gets a full block of netherite. Oh no! What? what? All right. <laughs> Does third place get anything? I, I unfortunately no. I'm not. I'm not that crazy at grinding. Empty hand. You get one baked potato. I'm gonna be honest. When I don't know if you can hear. When when the oh. competition started, I only had like four ingots. <laughs> So I <laughs> uh, kind of had to, had to compromise a little bit. Thank you, everybody, for, for playing. Was, it was really fun to watch you guys play and see I what your methods like, were. I would like to thank Van for doing this amazing event for us completely on his own. Uh, Like... I, you, you did like 40% of the work. No, no, no. You did. You set it up and came up with all the ideas and everything on your own. I did part two. I helped with part two. But thank you, Van. That was fantastic. Thank you, Van. Thank you, Van. Why is, Thanks, why, Van. Why is Silver outside the window? <laughs> that concludes the Halloween celebrations. I th th Again, thank you guys for, for playing and uh even considering <laughs> um but yeah uh oh, no. have a have a good night but... thanks man congratulations thanks, man. everybody yeah. yeah i'll be honest it kind of hurt giving away that second place prize away to beardo you you know the person who's on several accounts of murder like particularly over there like in in zen's place 
but I, I did feel like it was in order. Uh, w when I originally made the announcement for the jack-o'-lantern hunt, I made it so that as soon as it was made, that people could start. What I didn't consider was that whoever happened to be online at the time would have a huge advantage because of the fact that only they knew what was going on at the time, which just happened to be Silver. No, di no dirt on him, he just played as intended, I just didn't really think things through. Due to that oversight, I prepared a second place prize just so nobody felt out left out of the competition. That being said, you may have noticed that I have a pretty hefty amount of experience and that my food source at the moment is cooked cod. As you may have guessed, yes, uh, Obi and I finished the Prismarine farm. It was, it was pretty difficult to start with. Making the platforms where the Guardians get boosted up to was actually pretty dangerous due to how many of them were spawning. Uh, like, <laughs> okay. So they were, there were a bunch spawning, a bunch of them would target you, and then because you're swimming, you couldn't get away that quickly. So I, I actually ended up dying once. So what we ended up doing was that Obi would keep them busy while I built the platform. But yeah, not the easiest farm to make. Do, do make with caution. But yeah, the farm that I used will be in the description. I recommend it wholeheartedly. Um, one handy thing that I actually ended up figuring out uh, was an Etho Hopper Clock. Uh, I, d I had no idea on how one worked because I've never gotten a good look at one before. But doing this allowed me to get a proper perspective on how it worked. Again, I'm, I'm still very much in the process of learning Redstone. But, uh, yeah, you may be curious as to how well the farm itself works. And, uh, I, I think it's best if I show you our first reactions. But, uh, spoilers, it did really well. So the reason we're up here and at this angle is basically so we can ensure that it's just the the guardians uh, spawning and nothing else in caves or anything like that beneath well, well I mean like like the thing down there Why is oh that my gosh oh something triggered oh my word what? Okay. Oh, right. I need to get sweeping edge on this thing, but, uh, yeah, there's already stuff flowing into here. Oh, and also oh doubles as an XP farm. There you go. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, once I get sweeping edge, this will, uh, work a lot better, but... So oh, I was... I picked up the rest of the XP. Well, there's Heal plenty me! of it to go around. Heal me! But yeah, I was uh, like level 3 a couple seconds ago. I'm now at level 30. So it doubles as a Damn. very handy XP farm. I think you broke Minecraft. I didn't break Minecraft. Or they too. broke Minecraft. Yeah. They broke Minecraft, and now you're breaking Minecraft in this world because of this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can... In... Did you cook that cup? No. No, oh, you get cooked cod too? No. No, yeah, you get cooked cod. I was seeing in the chest here. Oh, because yeah, with you, because you have the flame on your sword. You have fire oh, aspect, right? Oh, right. You have fire aspect. I don't have fire aspect, so that's, that's why there's awesome. rock cod. <laughs> <laughs> Free food. Yep, as you can see, that thing works like crazy. Um... <laughs> So basically, how this thing works is, uh, remember how I mentioned that the farm design I was using inspired my entrance? Well, yeah, this is that part. Basically, it spawn. I'm going to have to be careful here. Um, they spawn on top of the monument here, and, you know, they just automatically get pushed up. 
uh, right into this place, and then they just kind of wander around for a little bit until they fall into that portal. And then they spawn up here. It's actually kind of a problem where they will spawn so many that they will die of entity cramming before they make it to the bomb. So you, that's why the items are there. Um, and then uh, they just end up here and then you swipe it once and then boom, they die. Uh, that's because I actually managed to get sweeping edge on this thing now. But um, as you can see, um, you fill up quite quickly, especially when you ex you're experimenting on how many levels you can get, how fast. But uh, yeah, the my only real problem now is getting a reliable source of ink sacks, uh, so that I can get Dark Prism Ring going. And yeah, that I'm probably gonna turn that down on the video because they are way too noisy. But yeah, as you can tell, all the chests are full by the fact that all of these items are just kind of setting here. I'm just letting them rot. I just kind of sh shove them out of my inventory at this point. We should probably uh, get back to work on... Oh my gosh. You can't, you <laughs> I wonder if this will peak out my audio. Yep, it did. <laughs> right at the end, you could hear it a little bit. Um... But, yeah, uh, I will gather up this XP, oh my gosh, uh, and I will head back up to the shop and work on that, so I can actually, you know, sell this stuff, because I have way too much of it. Alright, where is he? Oh. Oh, okay. That doesn't sound promising. Oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> Building a house, a new house. Let's get him. Uh, hello. What do you think you're doing, stealing my frog lights? I fro frog lights. Uh, yes. I I I didn't, I didn't see any frog lights. You did, because they're gone from my stall, and they're now in the decorations around the town hall, which is your doing. Okay, fair enough. I uh, was not the most subtle about that, but okay. Beardo, you, you can't just come in, murder people, and then go, oh, hey, I'm going to sell my frog lights here. That's not how the world works. I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, what makes you say yes. that? I did. Uh, uh-huh. And what's your word around here? <laughs> it's the word. Uh, y y okay, so like you you you, you 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 move you moved out. I'm like the main person taking care of it. You know how many raids I've had to had to stop because you your shenanigans. How many? Like ten. You got them all angry, they're all congregating around here, and now I have to deal with them on a daily basis. Well, it's not my fault somebody put them in my place. Well, yeah, probably they probably went to your place because you kept starting raids. I... Besides the point, um, you need to pay me. Um... Do you? Uh, you do the ice, don't you? I mean, I, I do. I, I did make the 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 speedway, and I'm playing on. So, you, wh 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 what's your point? Well, I need a quick way to my mansion. Oh. So you better build me highway. Yeah. Or. Pay me ten diamond block stack for my frog lights. Um, that's your special price because you took them without asking. You stole them. You thieved them. You you and you killed me. What's 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 your point? Block. Yeah, I'll kill you. I will embed this axe. 
Uh, if you do not build me my answer, I will. No. Oi! Okay. Oh, no! Shoot. You will! Big for mercy! No. Yes, you will! Nope. Oh, shit. You make me eat my eyes. Do it! Nope. Okay, 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 jeez. Jeez. Okay. Do it. All right. You barely even scratched me. Even on <sighs> fire, I am indestructible. Okay. I do not even need to eat. Fine. Good grief. Now go and make me uh, an ice road. Yeah, you'll get your own stinking ice highway. I knew you'd give in. I knew it! With great haste, too, by the way. I'll do it once I, my shop's done. Alright, I'll let you have that one concession. <sighs> Hurts. Grief. Okay. Um, that was very nearly disastrous. Okay. Could have took all my stuff for all I know. Okay. I mean, all things considered, we put up a good fight, but. Yeah. Uh, I guess I need to. Uh, I think I got the shakes a little bit. Okay. We uh, evidently need to pick up the pace on this thing, otherwise, Spirito might throw a fit. All right. Well, it took some time, but we finally managed to get this shop up and running. Uh, as you can see, I made a little bit of a path that connects to the main town here. I figured it would make sense. You know, it, it looks nice-ish. <laughs> as nice as, as I can get a path, which is not great, but whatever. But uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a shed outside. And um, this was actually where I was keeping all of my items to build this thing. Uh, and, well, long story short, I was too lazy to, <laughs> to uh, take it out of here. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple of the materials I've got in here, just build a shed around it, and just make it look like it's supposed to be here. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, I added one of the um, bloom blossoms. I forget their name. Spore blossoms. There you go. Uh, I figured, you know, it kind of added to the the kind of oldness of this build. This place is kind of supposed to be uncapped and sloppy, you know. Therefore, sloth slop shop. Um, <laughs> That's I don't know if I've mentioned the name, but that yeah, that's what I'm planning to call this place. It, it the um the dark oak wood bits are supposed to be you know wet spots, and y you can see how they're commonly at the top of the roofings and whatnot. I I had a bit of inspiration. Uh, I went out of town for a bit, and yeah, there was this one specific building that um really inspired me so yeah um, i'm actually going to show you the roof for a moment and as you can see uh i 
kind of okay. I'm, I'm a little bit of a story time. So whenever I built, I need to take this witch hat off. It's December now. <laughs> I um whenever I uh ended like did, made this place, I did not really consider mob proofing it. So apparently there were mobs spawning up here, and somebody <laughs> took the initiative and placed a bunch of buttons up here. Yeah, so not. <laughs> I, I decided to learn from that. Um, and I tried everything in my power to make sure I spawn proof this roof because there are some parts of it that are not quite even as high as that building over there, so pretty decent chance of mob spawning on like this per se. Uh, and yeah, I decided to add a bunch of the glow lichen because I figured it kind of added to that overgrown, unkept look, and also, you know, helps light the place up. But I also added um, wooden buttons, uh, because, A, it, like, it could be part of, like, the old roofing, like, the old style of roofing, and also kind of makes it slightly unkept as well. It's like a combination of ideas there. And, uh, yeah. So, not not much to point out on the roof, because it's a roof, but there there were reasons for why I did what I did. But uh, I guess we should probably go inside the shop itself, so let's use this water elevator. And, uh, yeah, here's the inside of the shop. Here's a bunch of the different prices, and um, the, you don't actually only have to use diamonds. Uh, as you can see, we have a little conversion thing here. Uh, so one diamond equals 64 gunpowder, 64 sand, 64 iron. Uh, the blocks of bamboo, I I might lower that. In fact, yeah, I'm going to do that now. 32. Because that seems a little more fair to me. Two stacks of sugar cane, 16 of any sniffer seeds, 16 of any frog lights, 16 emeralds. And um, yeah... <laughs> Uh, the Totem of Undying counts as four diamonds, because I know Grizzly has a uh, Totem of Undying farm somewhere. But yeah, here's just some little extra stuff. Uh, and yeah, you can basically use any of those items to... Oh, looks like we've uh, had somebody buying out some of the redstone. I kind of figured that that would be kind of a seller, because... I always hear of people running out of redstone. I don't know why redstone's really easy to get. In fact, I often have too much of it. That's why I did this. And yeah, we already sold a decent bit. But yeah, we have ice, packed ice. Uh, I'm not going to do blue ice as of right now because... I'm sorry, but I'm going to save that specifically for the Silver Snow Road. More on that later. Um, we also have sea lanterns. I'm probably going to craft more. Uh, cactus, because I remember that cactus farm all the way at the the beginning when I um, was just starting out. I didn't even have my first house yet. I just had a hole in the cliff. Yeah, that that's what that's from. That's how I was getting my gunpowder for a while, and then I just kind of converted it into a cactus farm. Um, this one is undecided. I might do fish here. Uh, that makes the most sense. <laughs> Get it? Fish in a barrel. Um, and also gravel, because people have really been wanting, uh, concrete. And I just tend to dig up a lot of gravel when I'm mining. So, yeah. Uh, that's all of the items I'm planning to sell. Here's a weather skeleton head, because I didn't know what else to put here. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a way to replace that, because I, I'm not rich on them. I'm just, I don't know, I, it felt right. <laughs> And, um, I was just determined to use it. I don't know. But, um, yeah, here's the payment thing. Um, and there's actually some redstone hooked up to this. So if I put in steak, uh, for example, um, that's not any of the payment options, but whatever. And, uh, press this button. A minecart will take all that stuff away, play it a little note, and take the stuff back. Uh, into the storage. We'll we'll see that in a bit. But um, yeah, going into the back here, into my office, 
Um, there was a surprising amount of work that went into this room, mostly in the paintings. This here is a map of the Silverstone uh, Speedway. Yeah, that is uh, that is the uh, the name I decided to give the, my ice highway. And uh, yeah, there's a little mapping of the bedrock roofing. Um, there's Obi's place there. There's Copper and Jane's. There's Grizzlies off into the north. Wait, is it would it be north? It's like that's west. Okay, so up is west. I should probably add a comment. This thing is still a work in progress. Um, but yeah, there's Ori far into the south, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, and there's also this little place. Uh, Obi and I ended up kind of exploring around accidentally. <laughs> or I Okay, I was trying to look up a tutorial for the Prismarine farm, and Obi just kind of ended up wandering off, and we found this location. So I thought it would be, make for a pretty nice picture in the office. Um, so yeah, if we go up here, we actually have a little extra bunker space. And as you can tell, we, we uh, there were some pigs kind of coming by, and um, yeah, they asked for a place to stay, and uh, yeah, it's uh, decided to give uh, set them up with a little... I don't know who put that there. <laughs> uh, the, I, I don't think the pigs wrote those signs. <laughs> so, I should probably show you guys the, the guts of this place. But um, before I do that, I I put my ender chest somewhere. I I always lose my ender chests. Here's a little piece of paper, and I am going to throw this into here. And bada bing, bada boom, we have a secret entrance to the basement. <laughs> but yeah, combining. Okay, so this is made up of two main components, um, an item sorter, which basically um, sorts out the password, and the system that allows me to uh, get into here. And smashing them together like this was interesting. That's what led to the use of this, of this cauldron, because um, for those who don't know, cauldrons uh, actually output power to a comparator which makes it really useful for if you want to put a power uh, block on top of a sticky piston because redstone blocks have a tendency to make uh, sticky pistons stuck when they are on top of them. So yeah, that's why I used a cauldron instead. But yeah, it, everything's kind of crammed here. It's not very pretty. But in a sense, like have it, like it being makeshift like this kind of adds to the feel, in my opinion. But yeah, here is that little system. You can see the little note block ding there. And um, yeah, if I could just get into here. Um, okay, how do I explain this? So this is connected up to the barrel, which basically it's kind of like an item sorter, but it doesn't really sort items, it just helps detect whether or not this barrel is empty and the minecart is ready to be sent off. So um, if this barrel is full, that powered rail will be turned off and the minecart uh, will just kind of stay there. So And uh, once it's empty, it'll turn on and it'll go back to the collection system. And um, I believe that also powers this block right here. So yeah, it when it's finished, it will always do a little ding. But uh, right up here, it's basically a simple redstone line. This is above the button that you press to send the items away. And um, it basically just sends that minecart over. It's nothing that complicated. But uh, speaking of the items, uh, here is the storage system bits, and it looks like we've actually managed to get seven diamonds and 32 blocks of bamboo. That's exciting. But um, here's our steak. Uh, and also, there's uh, some stuff over here. Now, the reason for that is because 
Um, I ended up thinking of a theoretical situation. What if someone made a bulk purchase and the hopper minecart got full because they can only hold five slots. So I basically wanted to make it so that it will slowly drain out into here so that the uh, minecart hopper never just gets stuck, basically, and it will always be sent back. Um, even though the, the storage will be a little split, I, there's not much I can do in this little amount of space. But um, <laughs> uh, here's the button out. And there's also a little Easter egg with this build it, building that I'm going to show you guys. So I want to find an example, like a live example over here in town. But people have a tendency, yeah, here we go, to make the barrels on buildings. They're just like their temporary <laughs> uh, like storage. So you'll just find random items in here. <laughs> um, and I wanted... Well, I, I honestly don't mind that much if people use my barrels for it, but I wanted it to be kind of... I, I wanted to <laughs> catch them in the act, so to speak. So, if someone um, is to, you know, try to use the barrels on any of the uh, parts of this building, which is just three barrels because most of it is underground, um, they will... <laughs> have a unexpected little thing to happen. Let's just put ink sacks. It will start being drained out and it will give them a little message saying, find your own storage. I thought that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just a hidden dispenser. It's pretty simple. Uh, and there's just a hopper detecting whether or not uh, an item is passing through a hopper and it'll just pass uh, something up. I'm going to have to grab those back later. I actually need uh, ink sacks. But yeah, that will also work with uh, both of these. <laughs> both of these barrels as well. So yeah, that's fun. I'm going to have to spoil the fun for myself because uh, yeah, I, I, I told Beardo that as soon as the shop was done I'd start working on that ice road, so... I guess it's time for me to dig into my ice reserves and start making that road. So thankfully, Beardo's place, this is his portal, uh, seems to be relative, like, be west, which Yevo's road also leads west. So what I probably will do is build off of Yevo's road a bit and have it eventually lead to here. So it'll basically be uh, branching off from each other. Stupid Beardo and his stupid ice road, stupid frog lights, stupid axe, stupid armor. Stu Imagine the nerve of that guy coming up to a town that he barely visits, shoving me and forcing me to do this. Come on. Oh, and not to mention he he murdered there too. <sighs> not letting that happen again. I not entirely sure what I'll do about it, but I guess I got time to think about while I'm doing this. Well, there's the portal right there. We're actually approaching it a little far to the uh, the west, but um, frankly, I don't care. I if Beardo wants to complain about it, then. I don't care. Um, hopefully, he's not annoyed enough to the point where he will try to come and kill me, but um, yeah, I still have a lot to work to do. I still have to get some deep slate and go make what was thing. Why, 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 Beardo, man? <sighs> like, I'm okay with making this for anybody else, but like, this is just gonna mean that he's gonna come into town more often. And I would rather that not be the case, for obvious reasons. Uh, are we there yet? Okay, good. That's the most tedious part out of the way. I gotta do the button still, but... Oh, oh, oh right. I didn't think about that. Hmm... Can I do it at this angle? No. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to solve that, because that's gonna be annoying. After much anguish, uh, we managed to get this thing fully built to Beardo's place, so... We're gonna have to expect more visits for him. Yay. But, um, in other news... Um, I had a little bit of a problem, which was the fact that the intersection between Beardo and Yevo's place was, I mean, like, I could care less if Beardo just slid off into the distance. In fact, I would find that kind of funny, but I don't want Yevo to have that same issue. So I needed to figure out a boat stopper. And yeah, here it is. And the funny thing is, was that, like, the other day, I was anguishing over this for probably an hour and a half. I had, like, pistons everywhere, redstone lines, just try trying to figure this thing out. And then I went over to my cow farm that's nearby my shop um, uh, the next day or whatever. And I saw the fence gates that were there. I'm like, hmm. Uh, okay, here's the thing. I, the issue I was running into was that whatever system I had would always have a hard time activating by the time, uh, you know, I was through here. So I would just kind of keep sliding anyways. So, yeah, I um, thought, well, if this fence gate would stay closed by the time I hit it... Um, and just, it would only activate after I hit it, then would I stay? And as you can see, yeah, it, it works. It It's kind of stupid how simple this is and how well it works every time, uh, especially considering that I messed around with designs for probably what? Um, <laughs> like... And uh, yeah, an hour and a half, two hours. If you guys want to copy that, you're more than welcome to. There, there's probably a s design similar to this somewhere on YouTube, but uh, it's it's fun to do redstone yourself because then you <laughs> run into situations like that. So I think it's about time that we start wrapping up here. Uh, th this episode was a bit longer than I anticipated, but that's kind of becoming the norm now. Um, but before we end off, I do want to bring up a little comment, uh, because I, I was trying to respond to this comment, but then I realized that I would, every single time I would just make an entire paragraph. So I figured it would probably just be best to respond to this in video form. Uh, this was, this comment was made on the, uh, Mount Copper video, I believe, but, uh, the comment is, I really like your editing. It feels more like old Let's Play content than SMP content, which is really cool. Now, that, that that's kind of funny to me because SMP content uh, spans, you know, a lot of years. And the, the first thing I think of when I think of SMP content is like mind crack and like uh, <laughs> uh, hermit craft and whatnot. But I imagine in this day and age, they're probably thinking more like Dream SMP, Lifesteal, and those kinds of things. But yeah, that comment was made by My Toaster Died. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting comment because there's a lot of history behind um, the style that I decided to go with uh, with my editing because I... Spoiler warning, I've been doing YouTube for quite a bit longer than what my current channel shows. And um, over those years and over the time that I've been watching Minecraft YouTube, which I think is like 11 years now, um, I've watched a really wide variety of channels. and I've gotten a lot of inspiration from a lot of them. Uh, so, a, a lot of them are from people that are more from the olden days such as like the, the first person i watched was uh map gaming that that's with two m's he did a bit of a survival series and survival games that that's how i first got into survival games all the way back then uh but you know there was also ant venom 
and Ethos Lab, and there's another one, but I can't quite think of off the top of my... Oh, uh, Paul Soares Jr. And also, you know, a lot of the, the people around me who I play with, such as, you know, Beardo, Ori, uh, Obi, and so on and so forth. Oh, and um, uh, uh, another person is uh, like a person who I've really been uh, trying to learn from as of recent is uh, B double O. Um, that's um, basically why I did my time lapse in the Mount Copper video. The way that I did it, it wasn't just a huge speed up. It was just like multiple shots of me, you know, doing it at normal speed. Because, I don't know, I, I like the way uh, B-dubs did it, so that's kind of what I went with. It, you know, like, my style is still evolving to, to this very day, and, you know, I continue to get uh, inspiration from different people. But um, the old style I really liked uh, because, you know, it allowed you a, a certain immersion into the video. It allowed you to really fully realize what the person in the video was doing. But a problem with those kinds of old videos, I think I mentioned this earlier, was that there was a lot of dead air. Like, I like seeing the process, but I don't need to see you, like, <laughs> filtering through your chests, for example. Unless, you know, they're actively explaining why they're getting everything that they're getting, which was often not the case. But um, the thing I like about the, the new stuff, though is that you know it kind of cuts to the chase uh and there's a lot more mastery over pacing which is something that i've tried to focus on a lot with my videos um is just like ha have it slow steady and methodical but also you know have a decent pacing and i i, I think i do an all right job <laughs> But um, I, I don't go like way over the top, like um, uh, the like shorts are the first thing that I think of. Like there, there are a lot of people that like that kind of stuff, but um, just not me. Uh, it ju I just don't feel that sense of time. I don't feel the immersion. I don't feel that sense of place or conflict or or progression in the same way as I do with other videos. But uh, they do their pacing really well. So I tend to strike in the middle, which is basically, you know, the equivalent of like what most uh, hermit crafters do now. And that, that was partially by coincidence and partially because, you know, Etho is a part of that group and I watch Etho a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, hopefully that explains everything about my editing style. I... I I, I, I kind of went on about that for a little too long, but I I think editing is really fascinating, uh, especially when it comes to pacing and whatnot and uh, style. And it's really fun watching other YouTubers, uh, you know, explain their style of editing as well. So it, it's just, I, I wanted to nerd out about that for a moment. But yeah, I think that should be about everything. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Hopefully my next upload won't take as long. I severely apologize about that. A lot of stuff happened IRL, but yeah, have a good one.